we are still on the continuation of the lessons for ratio and proportions. So after knowing what the ratio is, it is followed by proportion. Then last meeting, we know what is a proportion. Now, we're going to learn the types of proportion. So we have three. We have direct proportion, inverse proportion, and partitive proportion. And as an idea, ang proportion ay tinatawag ding variation. Ayan. So ibig sabihin, these are the types of proportion. Ito rin yung tinatawag natin types of variation. So we have direct proportion or variation. We have inverse proportion or variation. And the partitive proportion or variation. So we're going to define each and give some examples. Una, direct proportions or variations. So direct proportion is a proportion wherein if one quantity increases, the other quantity increases. Or if the quantity increases, the other quantity also decreases. So kung ano yung pangyayari sa unang quantity, yun din ang pangyayari sa second quantity. So pag nag-increase, increase dapat yung kabila. Pag nag-decrease, decrease din dapat yung kabila. So that is direct proportion. So ibig sabihin, they are directly proportional to each other. So halimbawa, meron tayong dalawang quantity, x and y. The ratio of y to x is constant para masabing direct proportion. So alam natin, pag sinabing the ratio of y to x, that is y over x. That is a constant. So ibig sabihin, hindi nagbabago kahit anong value ng y at saka ng x. Pag dinivide sila, lagi silang constant. Yan ay direct proportion. So ito yung makikita nating formula. y over x is equals to k. Or pag dinerive natin, into y, y is equals to k times x. So, pag yan ang nakita nating uh, formula, that is direct proportions. Okay? So, again, k represents the constant of proportionality. So, constant, hindi yan nagbabago, kahit anong value ng x and y. And dapat hindi siya equal to zero. So, walang constant na zero sa proportions. Now, let's have some examples or illustration ng direct proportion or variation. Example number one, the circumference of a circle can be computed by C is equals to 2 pi R. So, alam natin yan sa geometry. C is circumference. Then, R is radius. So, makikita natin sa formula that circumference is directly proportional to the radius. The constant of proportionality is 2 pi. So remember yung um uh, yung formula natin kanina na y over x is equals to k. Ayan. So kung ito yung circumference, ito yon. Tapos ito yung radius, ito yon. So, same lang sila ng form. Ito ay constant. Okay? So, pag ganyan ang form, ibig sabihin, ang formula ng circumference na galing sa general formula is direct proportions. So, ibig sabihin, itong part na to ay constant. So, yung other form ng formula is y is equals to kx. Constant. So, nandito ang y, nandito ang x. Constant ang k. Kung ganito naman, nasa taas ang y, nasa ilalim ng x, k is the constant. Next, another example ng direct proportion is the revenues from sales of a single item is computed by multiplying the number of units sold by the unit selling price. So, ang quantity natin, unit sold is represented by X, unit price represented by P. 
if the total revenue from the sales is denoted by y so kung i-represent natin yung revenue ng y ganito yung magiging formula niya so ang revenue daw is equivalent sa sa product ng units at ng selling price so kung mapapansin natin equivalent din siya dun sa general formula na kx Okay, so ito ang constant which is the selling price. So pag ginawa natin ganito, ito yung constant. P is still the constant. So ibig sabihin, we can see in the formula that revenue is directly proportional to the number of units sold. And then the constant of proportionality is the unit selling price. So that is basically the definition of direct proportions and yung itsura ng kanyang formula. Next, we have the inverse proportion or variation. Inverse proportion is a proportion wherein if one quantity increases, the other quantity decreases or vice versa. So magkaiba yung nangyayari sa quantity, first quantity and second quantity. So sabi, pag nag-increase yung isa, magde-decrease yung kabila. Now, kung nag-decrease naman yung una, mag increase yung pangalawa. So that is inverse proportion. For instance, so again, i-represent natin yung dalawang quantity na x and y. Para masabing inverse proportion, the product of x and y is the constant. Kanina sa direct proportion, ang constant ay ratio ng y to x. Pero sa inverse proportion, ang constant ay product ng x and y. So, ibig sabihin, product ng x and y is the constant. Ayan. So, ito yung formula niya. x times y is equals to k. Kung i-derive natin into y, y is equals to k over x. Okay? So, kung derive naman natin na x, that is k over y. So, kung mapapansin natin, lagi magkasalungat yung position ng x and y. Because they are inverse proportion. Again, alam natin ng k represents the constant of proportionality at hindi dapat siya maging zero. So, let's have example of inverse proportion. So, Sa chemistry, so we, we know that Boyce's law states that an ideal gas of a given mass exerts pressure, represented by P, which is inversely proportional to the given vol volume of space, represented by V, occupied by the gas. So makikita natin sa formula na the product of pressure and volume is equals to K, K is constant, product ng dalawang quantity, therefore, it is inverse proportion. And then, kung dinerive naman siya, P is equals to K over B, nasa ilalim yung volume, so magkasalungat yung position nila, inverse proportion sila. So, nasa taas yung constant. So, that is basically the inverse proportion. Next, we have the partitive proportions or variation. So, partitive proportion is a proportion wherein a quantity is divided such that the parts are in definite ratio with each other. So, halimbawa, ang isang quantity dinivide siya into several parts, yung bawat parts ay ratio to each other. So, that is partitive proportion. So, para natin ma-solve ang mga ganitong uh, problem sa partitive proportions, you usually equate the sum of all parts to the whole quantity. So, katulad din ng uh, previous examples natin sa problem solving ng ratio and proportion, ina-equate natin yung total equal parts sa uh, whole quantity. Okay, let's have example number one for partitive proportions. 
So, katulad din ito ng mga previous problem solving natin. Pero ngayon, i-define na natin siya as partitive proportion. Three investors invested okay, a total of 765,000 pesos. So, ito yung sinasabing whole quantity in a business in the ratio of 2 is to 3 is to 4. So, first investor or investor A, investor B, and investor C. How much was the biggest investment? Dahil tatlo yan, i-represent natin yung tatlong investor. So, unahin natin yung representation ng one part. So, let X is equals to one part. And then, investor A has two parts. Kasi yung sabi, two. Then, investor V is equals to 3x kasi 3 parts daw yung kanya. Then, investor C is equals to 4x kasi 4 parts yung kanya. Okay? So, ang sabi, equate natin lahat ng parts which is 2x plus 3x plus 4x to the whole quantity which is 765,000. So, combine like terms, 2x plus 3x plus 4x is 9x equals to 765,000. Divide both sides by 9. So, x is equals to 85,000. This is just one part. So, ang tanong is... How much was the biggest investment? So, hindi natin kailangan isolve lahat ng bawat investor kasi ang tinatanong kung sino yung may pinakamataas na investment. So, alam natin na four parts ang pinakamataas na part. So, investor C yung i-compute natin. Okay? So, investor C has 4x. So, that is 4 times the amount of each part which is 85,000. 4 times 85,000 is 340,000 pesos. So, this is the biggest investment. Okay? Let's have example number 2 for partitive proportion or variation. A man plans to, plans to donate his collection of 3,042 books to three libraries in the ratio of 1 is to 3 is to 5. Ibig sabihin, 3,042 is the whole quantity divided by 3 parts in the ratio of 1 is to 3 is to 5. Ibig sabihin, library 1, library 2, or library 3, or library A, library B, or library C. As long it is 3 libraries. Ang tanong, How much books will each library receive from his donation? So by this time, ang pinapakompute is how, ma how many uh, books for each library. Hindi katulad kanina sa investment na yung largest lang yung pinapakompute. Pero ganun pa rin yung solution natin. Una, i-represent natin kung ilan ba yung one part. So that is x is equals to one part. Now, Library A has is equals to x kasi yung sabi, one part. Library B has 3x because of 3 parts. Then Library C is 5x because it has 5 parts. Again, equate natin lahat yan. x plus 3x plus 5x sa total number of books which is 3,042. Again, x plus 3x plus 5x is 9x equals 3,042. Divide both sides by 9. Therefore, each part, one part is 338 books. So, this is just one part. So, how many books for each library? So, tutuusin natin sa bawat library. Una, Library A is equals to X kasi one part lang siya. And that is equivalent to 338 books. So, ang mare-receive nila is 338 books. Library B is equals to 3X kasi it has three parts. So, that is 3 times 
times 338, makaka-receive sila ng 1,014 books. And lastly, yung library C is equals to 5x, that is 5 times 338, which is 1,690. Iyan ang mare-receive mare nilang number of books. So, yung totality ng 3,042, 338 mapupunta sa library A, 1,014 books mapupunta sa library B, at 1,690 books mapupunta sa library C. Let's have the third example for partitive proportion or variation. Example number three, at a movie premiere, the number of children, men, and women who attended were in the ratio of 2 is to 3 is to 4. Again, yung ratio ay nakabase sa uh, pagbanggit ng quantity. Nauna ang children, so that is 2, followed by men, which is 3, women, 4. That is the ratio. The ratio of children to men and to women is 2 is to 3 is to 4. Now, if 240 children watched the premiere, how many persons were in the audience? Yung totality ng persons na umaten sa movie premiere. Again, let's represent um, X as one part. Okay? Then, i-represent natin yung children, men, and women. So, children is equivalent to 2X kasi 2 parts. Then, men is equivalent to 3X kasi 3 parts. Then, women is equal to 4X because of 4 parts. Now, para makompute natin yung 1 part, Instead of i-add natin lahat sila, equate sa total, pwede natin siyang kunin dito sa given na 240 children. So, yung 2x is equals to 240, divide both sides by 2, the answer is 120. So, this is just the one part that we're talking about. So, one part is 120. Now, so, i-substitute na natin siya sa ating equation pag kinuha na natin yung total number of audience. So, we have the children, 2x, plus men, 3x, plus women, 4x, is equals the totality. Given na tayo ng children, which is 240, plus 3 times x, which is 120, plus 4 times x, which is 120, is equal to the totality of audience. We have 240 plus 360 plus 480. The answer is 1,080. This is the total number of audience attended the movie premiere. Okay? So that is how we use or how this is how we compute problems involving partitive proportion or variation.